uh, very vibrantly since then. When did you join it? I started as a part-time senior fellow in the late summer of 2003. So I was there almost from the beginning. In fact, they, our numbers are on our paychecks, so you can kind of figure out where you are. What's um, your number? Um, I think it's somewhere around in the in the 40s. And um, so we have grown very quickly since then. I then came on board as a full-time senior fellow about a year later, and then a little over a year after that, I assumed the position that I have now. All right, uh, Cupcakes at 8, what's the next political thing you did? Let's see, after Cupcakes at 8, probably running for uh, being involved in student government uh, in high school in some way, the student assembly, uh, running for and losing my freshman class president <laughs> a race. Um, you know, it's kind of one of those scars that you have to deal with, the rough and tumble of political life. Um, but going on from there to be uh, actively involved in student government. And then in college, being involved, very actively involved in a range of different campus activities. Um, did you ever win an election? Um, I did um, for a number of different organizations, both in high school and in college. Um, I was president of a range of different things. Um, from there, so I guess I learned some smart political lessons at a, at a pretty early age, at the age of 14. Did you ever ask, uh, or did you ever see a figure on how many class presidents there are in Washington, D.C.? <laughs> no, I'd be curious to find out. I would imagine that there are countless class presidents all over the place. You went to University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, Absolutely. to study history. Yes. Why history, and what did it do for you? What kind of history did you get interested in? I, as I said, even from being, you know, probably five or six and reading um, the books that five, you know, six-year-olds are starting to read, um, have just always been fascinated with it. And I think part of it for me is the story. Um, there, with every um, autobiography, um, with the development of the country, I find a really fascinating story. I mean, how did it come together? And the different perspectives that people have on history. I mean, for every historical act, um, there are, you know, a multitude of, of different perspectives on it. So I think my first love came because of because of the stories. Um, but from there, it was just uh, my interest, I think, in the civil rights movement, which also intersected with um, my background growing up in the church and my views of social justice. Um, so all those things came together. So I went to Carolina with an interest and intent in studying history. But then I also became a part of, I was selected for our fellows program, and we had an incredible uh, director of that program who really challenged us. And she said, why do you want to do that? You know, explore it. Don't just because someone else told you it was a good idea think that this is a good, a good thing for you. Because at that time I was also thinking about law school. And I did explore it. I looked at public policy programs. I looked at you know a range of, of different things, but really came back to that because it was so interesting to me. So um, you're in college and you're thinking about law school and you're you're studying history. Mm -hmm. Did you become an expert in anything? Um, in terms of history, history yeah. Uh, my focus really did become the civil rights movement. Um, I, that was of great personal interest to me. Um, I found the mixture of people and the times. I think people um, pushing for change, um, even when there was, you know, obviously robust opposition. Um, I, the, the role of, that the church played in that movement, um, Dr. King, but also the women who were involved in the civil rights movement, um, and the relationship of the racial issues and the gender issues, as well as students becoming involved. And that's the work that I did for my honors thesis, particularly looking at the women of Bennett College, because you often hear about the men of North Carolina A&T and the sit-ins, but the role of women at Bennett College and their activism in the civil rights movement. Do you remember a or an historical figure at Bennett College that um, made a particular impression on you? Um, Dr. Willa Player. She was the president of Bennett College. And what makes all this, I, for me, very interesting is that Bennett College was known as being a school, it was an all-girls school, and it was a place where Afri young African-American women um, matriculated and they were ladies. Um, and there was a sense, and you're thinking about this during the 1960s, and uh, developing an educational program for African-American women during a really turbulent time to go out and to be professionals, um, but also it was important um, to be a lady. Um, and up against that is this very 
uh, violent, um, uh, chaotic period of time, and quite frankly, pushing back against uh, the law, um, in some ways breaking a law. And um, Dr. Player, who felt very strongly about protecting the young women there and protecting uh, Bennett College, also was, found it very important for these women to be involved in the political change of the day. And ironically, you know, fast forwarding to years later, and the minister that uh, was the senior minister of my church, um, uh, Reverend Tony Stanley, was a young chaplain at North Carolina A&T at the time and worked also with the women of Bennett and knew Dr. Player. And he talked about her going to the jails after all these young women had been arrested. Um, and talking to them and then going back to call all of their parents to tell them that they were okay. So what seems at first blush to be attention, um, you know, young ladies, um, you know, very proper, getting a good educational experience in this violent, chaotic period of time, um, really comes together in developing what I believe to be very strong women with a very keen sense of their place in history and the importance of the time. Was it... Uh North Carolina a and and Bennett, are they both uh, African-American? Yes, Af uh, historically, historically black, black colleges. colleges and universities in Greensboro, North Carolina. Now you didn't go to either either one of those, and you went mm -hmm. to the University of North Carolina Correct. At, at Chapel Hill, mm -hmm. and then the University of Michigan Law School. Correct. Uh, what, what advice would you have for somebody in the future, if you're African-American, you're better off going to a mixed school or going to... Uh, or it's historically black it's, it's, I really think it depends on the person, um, and that would be my advice. You have to explore what works for you. I have a number of friends that went to Spelman um, and to other, um, to Howard, to other historically black colleges and universities, and they loved it and got incredible educations um, and are, you know, incredible women. And at the same time, I loved my experience at the University of North Carolina and at Michigan and the, the diversity of people that I went to school with, um, confronting some of the issues that were at hand there. Um, and, and some of them were racial um, in terms of, of the politics and being engaged in that and being engaged in a debate. Um, sometimes there were tensions, but um, confronting that, and for me, I think that that was a good experience and one that has served me well since leaving those two institutions. Do you like to debate? I do enjoy it. I mean, I'm thinking about some of the you know, email debates I've been having with friends about the war and other issues. Um, I definitely enjoy it. Um, at the same time, and this is one of the things that I learned in the Senate and working with Senator Kennedy and others, even as strongly as you feel about your position and um, the principles of your position, that there comes a time when you know, while holding on to those principles, you have to figure out how you're going to go forward. And that's what our political system is all about. So you graduated what year from UNC? 1986. Why University of Michigan Law School? I traveled to a number of different law schools um, with a friend. We explored a lot of different schools. And I really liked Michigan for a number of reasons. I, I, I liked Ann Arbor. A lot. It, Michigan was, is a great law school. It was ranked in, in the top five. Um, there is also a good size African American um, and Latino population there, and, and a community, um, and the community that I felt like that would provide, as well as the friendships that I would have with other students. Um, so I would get a great and rigorous education. Um, there would be a diverse community which I could associate. Also, quite frankly, I like the idea of going to another part of the country. I mean, I'd grown up in Richmond, went to school in the South, so here was a chance to go to the Midwest, um, which I enjoyed. In fact, I remember uh, when it first got cold, all of a sudden I called my parents. It's like, oh my gosh, it's getting cold here already. Send me my winter clothes. So I had all these boxes of clothes, and a lot of my colleagues who were from the Midwest and thought, you know, she's from the balmy South, like, wow, you got all new winter clothes? <laughs> No, you know, I, I've had these for a while, but, um, you know, just being in a, a different part of the country and getting to know that and getting to know the people there. Did you get involved in politics at all? Did you work for any candidate in those years at either UNC or at the uh, University of Michigan? Um, I didn't get involved in local or state politics in any way. And, and thinking about this, I mean, there's certainly issues of the day that were going on at the school I and mean, how to... Um, increase the diversity of professors at the school, and I was involved in, on a committee um, with uh, the leadership, the uh, academic leadership of the school. Um,